So when I look at the world in terms of these issues, I see new geographies. And right now, the dominant geographies are geographies of extraction. They are geographies of power. And there is a kind of very strong practical function to all of this. So you see these geographies that they cut across all divides, north, south, east, west, but they cut across borders as if nothing. You don't need to be a citizen to move in this geography. You can just be a firm <laughs> and, and that's it. And so let me mention Luanda. Luanda has just been, like three years ago or something like that, has been declared, okay, important platform. Angola is a very big country. It's enormous. People do not realize that often. It's huge. And it is full of natural wealth, which has not yet been extracted or sort of fully, you know, the process started as we have in the Congo or whatever. So now Luanda, a city where you could barely find a hotel three years ago, is being built up as a kind of global city with a very specific function, which is all the corporates, the lawyers, the financiers, everything that you need in order to extract that natural wealth. And that natural wealth, of course, will leave the country and go to various markets, etc. It will be financialized, you know, many things will happen. So Luanda becomes this platform. Now here's the difference with older imperialisms that I see in where these, this network of global cities really are the key actors rather than governments. Eh, with. So if you think of the old imperialism of the French, la mission civilisatrice, everybody was going to learn French in the French empire. The Brits, India is the most, the clearest example, creating the subaltern, the staff for the empire, the lower order, so all those Indians had to be trained to be as if they were little Brits, to do all the, you know, the bureaucratic work of the empire. Today, that's totally out. So when people speak about imperialism today, my question is always, but if it is so different, what do we gain from calling it? imperialism. So I say we have shifted from sort of a global imperialism mode to a global extractive mode. And when you're done extracting, you leave. There is zero interest in changing the people and whatever. A concrete example, the, the, the Chinese have just bought a huge mine, a sort of, well, well a, a set of, you know, earth where there is a lot of mining iron uh, behind Rio de Janeiro. They develop the mine. They built the hospitals and the housing for the workers that they bring. They want to bring their own workers. They built a highway and they built a port. The highway goes from the mine to the port that they built. And it will take them a few years to exhaust all the iron from that mine and then they leave it all behind. They don't even want to be paid for the highway, for the board, nothing. It is purely extractive. Minimum dealing with the local, whether it's a local government. Or, so what we are talking about is one, one at this extreme of the global city uh, function is a capacity for extraction that is quite extraordinary, and it is different from the past. I say Nestle, Coca-Cola, and 25 other bottlers, they buy a huge piece of land, they set up all you need to set up in order to extract the water, and when they are done, they are out of there. They have nothing more to do with that country or that site, you see? So this is the most brutal site, you know, aspect of this new mode. And here, that network of global cities is a very strategic instrumentality. And the notion that somehow the global cities of the South are going to have, be very different from, not on the global city function, the cities, yeah, because the cities are there. I mean, those cities have come often from millennia right away. But it, we shouldn't confuse the visual order of a city with the global city function. The global city function is as brutal there in Luanda to reach Angola's wealth as it is in London or in New York, etc., to reach wealth that goes well beyond huh, that country. So that, that to me seems important. At the same time, once you build that platform, all kinds of other activities happen from illegal trading of people because you have all the instruments are there, right? 
the, 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 the marketing workers, to the, the, you know, these illicit ways in which capital also functions. We regularly hear about that. The drug trade that also has the money. The, the fact that over 50% of all the housing that is built in the new, very fancy towers in lower Manhattan, um, it's all shell companies. We don't know who owns it. You know, so there are multiple circuits, and in there also lies the globalizing of the human rights, of the, the fight for the, for the rainforest, though there is no rainforest in London. Or you know, so this, th these are new, new worlds. They are very partial worlds, but they are worlds. You cannot reduce it to one element. So it is far too easy to say that the global cities of the global south are going to be different. The cities might be very different, and how the people work within those and what their struggles are. But the global city function, whether it is in Hong Kong, in Beijing, whatever the, the big the important cities in China, or whether it is in Nigeria, or no. That global city function is marked by this very deeply extractive logic. And that is also something that needs to be recognized. The elites in these countries are those who have the power, those who can make sign the contracts. They are as troublesome as are those in Manhattan, in the financial sector. The city, large, broad, understood, those are very different. That is ground for action. But the global city function is a really hard, extractive function. And London has suffered, New York has suffered, rich cities have suffered, and poor cities will suffer. So we need to face that. And it has enabled a kind of global capitalism that we had never seen before, with finance the queen of the domain. Now, historically speaking, no formal system of power has lasted forever, nor will this. And finance is already beginning to discover its limits in terms of current instruments. Algorithmic math, much more advanced than microeconomics, will take them, has taken them much further than traditional banking. But there is a limit also there. Because once you're done extracting, nothing left. Okay.